A vibrant chorus cascades down the mountainside near Julian. The talented vocalists are gray wolves. They roam in a 50-acre conservation and research facility known as the California Wolf Center. Aaron Hunt is the center's general manager. Here at the center, we have 23 wolves. Uh, we have six Alaskan gray wolves. And the, the, these Alaskan gray wolves are here for education and research purposes. Uh, we also house uh, Mexican gray wolves, which are critically endangered with only about 50 living in the wild today. Mexican gray wolves were nearly extinct in the 1970s with just five remaining in the wild but the survivors were captured and the species was saved. Today, the Wolf Center is part of a national effort to give them a second chance. We have had uh, one pack of wolves uh, born here actually get to go out into the wild. They lived successfully in the wild for many years, and uh, the alpha female of that pack has offspring that are still currently living in the wild, so she definitely left her imprint on the recovery program. Three more wolves are set to be released this fall or winter to the reintroduction area along the Arizona and New Mexico border. The wolves that are reintroduced have very limited human contact. You don't want to release a wolf that's gotten a little too used to being around people uh, by, by being in the captive environment. So we here at the California Wolf Center work really hard to make sure that our wolves are maintained in as wild a state as possible. These Mexican gray wolves thrive here within these fences. Just this past April, four pups were born, but once they're released into the wild, they face many challenges. Once the Mexican gray wolf is uh, released into the wild, that's where uh, a lot of the uh, work really begins. Chelsea Davis is the center's animal care and facilities manager. She says the wolves in the wild are monitored and checked weekly. One is we do uh, howl surveys, so they'll go out actually at dawn or dusk around peak activity times for wolves and they'll actually try and get wolf packs to howl and you can tell uh, two individuals and two pups. Another way is through special microchipped collars. A lot of times you're expecting that the wolves will stay in the area um, where you release them and then you find out they're 60 miles away from that by the end of the week. The wolves are also observed to make sure they're hunting and eating the right prey such as elk and fish. That's because the reintroduction area is federal grazing land where roaming cattle and sheep often become tasty temptations. Historically, wolves were killed by ranchers for attacking livestock. At the Wolf Center, they're experimenting with a taste aversion, which is lacing meat with a nausea-inducing chemical. Dan Moriarty, a professor of psychological sciences at the University of San Diego, is using the technique to teach captive Mexican gray wolves that eating sheep will make them sick. Some people have, have described this as a process of going from yum to yuck. You know, it tasted good when you first encountered it, but after this illness episode, it simply doesn't taste good anymore. Moriarty says the question is whether the learned aversion during captivity will be enough to prevent the wolves from attacking livestock in the wild. Certainly it's going to be enough to prevent them from eating and it's hard to imagine why a predator would attack something, you know, logically, why would it attack something that is, is distasteful uh, to it. So the real answer is going to come with the field trials. Moriarty is hopeful the aversion will be an effective tool to boost the number of successful reintroductions. The goal is to create a thriving ecosystem, just like their sister, the Alaskan gray wolf, has done in the northern Rockies. They too were on the brink of extinction and were reintroduced in the wild starting in 1995. So in Yellowstone National Park, when wolves returned, they kept the elk herds on the move and they also were keeping the number of sick, injured, and very old and very young animals uh, down to a minimum. So the herds as a whole were healthier and they were moving around more often. This prevented overgrazing, which allowed willow and aspen trees to return and thrive. Uh, with the return of the willow and aspen, we saw a decrease in erosion of the stream beds in the riparian ecosystems or river ecosystems in the park, which meant that songbirds, fish, amphibians, beavers, and all sorts of other life could return to those areas. That's why there's such excitement over four Mexican gray wolf pups born at the center earlier this year. Hunt says they'll likely be selected for breeding or release. Could take several years for anything like that to happen. Uh, like we said, they are very young animals right now, uh, but it is definitely a uh, potential in their future.